How to Make Money at Home, The Helium Miner COVID Side Hustle. Hi, I'm Ricky Williams. In this video, we're going to talk about do-it-yourself helium mining. In our previous videos, we've shown you how to earn money every month with a helium miner without working. This has got to be one of the best opportunities available right now for making an easy side income. But it's not the only way to earn money from helium mining. In a couple minutes, I'm going to tell you how to create a helium hotspot with money attracting superpowers. But first, let's look at whether you should take the iHub Miner route or go the do-it-yourself route. The iHub Miner is best for you if you want set it and forget it automatic money. You can't afford much money up front. You don't want to make an investment, then risk losing it. You don't have the time or interest to set it up yourself. The iHub Miner is also best for you if you want to participate in iHub Global's affiliate program. You want to earn a full-time income, and you don't mind working the front end to make it happen. You're willing to pitch this easy money method to other people, and you don't mind working as an affiliate to get lots of people on your mining team. The do-it-yourself helium mining option is best for you if you don't mind paying for several hotspots up front. You're willing to work to optimize your own clusters of hotspots. You're technically minded and willing to invest the time needed to keep up to date on cryptocurrency, technology changes, helium mining developments, and methodologies. You're willing to find and negotiate with property owners to place your hotspots. You're not interested in being an affiliate for iHub Global or other helium networks. The do-it-yourself helium mining business model from 30,000 feet requires due diligence, that is, figure out if you can make enough money to be worthwhile. It requires you to sign up for a cryptocurrency exchange service, order one or more helium hotspot miners, evaluate your antenna needs, order your antennas, cabling, and installation hardware, wait a few weeks or months for hotspot miner delivery, or pay market price on eBay for immediate delivery, plan profitable hotspot locations, negotiate with hotspot location owners to place your hotspots, and set up your hotspots. Looking at a little bit more detail, for due diligence, you can skip this step if you want to. Just hope for the best, or you can treat this like a business. Look at potential hotspot locations and estimate likely income. Estimate the costs for one or more hotspots, including minor delivery costs, antenna costs, installation costs, access rights costs, and the cost of your time and cost of money if you need to borrow. You don't need to do this formally, but it's helpful to have an, a predicted income statement and cash flow analysis. You need to figure out your best guess and worst case hotspot minor delivery times, your best guess and worst case hotspot income. Will you still have a going business when helium payouts are halved again in two years? If you look at this chart, you can see that uh, in approximately the 1st of August, when the helium price is halved, uh, the price of h and was about $14. And so now the payouts are, are half, uh, but the price of helium has gone up. So that's kind of counterbalances a little bit, but there's no guarantees. You need to consider reward scaling losses if more hotspots are installed close to yours. If the density of hotspots around your hotspot increases, Helium will not pay you as much. They'll cut back on your rewards, and you have no control over this. Also, what will you do with reduced income as more and more hotspots compete for smaller and smaller H&T payouts? Right now, there's about 250,000 hotspots, and Helium is paying out about 2.5 million H&Ts per month. What will your business look like in two years when they're only paying out 1.25 million h and a month, and there may be over a million uh, hotspots competing for that payout. The second thing you need to do is sign up for a cryptocurrency exchange so you can exchange 
the helium tokens that you earn with your hotspots for dollars or other currencies. Two of the exchanges that will do that for you right now, and there aren't very many, are Crypto.com and Binance.us. Uh, if you sign up for Binance, you should allow some time for them to uh, do identity verification. So sooner is better. The third step is to order your helium hotspot miners. Estimated cost is $300 to $600 each retail. The upfront dollar cost may seem high, especially if you're planning on buying several hotspots, but the time cost of waiting may be even higher. Just run your cash flow analysis again with higher and higher upfront miner prices. Does it make sense to pay $1,100 for a hotspot on eBay right now, or wait two to four months for a $500 hotspot to arrive? Can you make the price difference of $600 in two to four months with a hotspot in your location? What about building your own hotspot device? If you're handy, you could build your own hotspot using Raspberry Pi technology. But for now, Helium only pays out h and to hotspots that they approve. And most of those are on this list here, although some more will be coming along. Uh, the newest ones are Linksdot, Nebra, and Panther X. And you can buy most of these on eBay for a big price jump. The fourth thing you need to do is select your antenna design. So you need to select the antenna and DBI rating that's best suited to your target coverage. Even if that turns out to be the built-in antenna that comes with your off-the-shelf device. You can use explorer.helium to look at nearby hotspots and look at the antenna DBI and height if it's provided. So Jumpy Raspberry Rooster hotspot is in uh, Rochester, Minnesota. And you can see in, in the information here that they're using a, a CalChip connected device, which is either a, a Curlink or a Rack hotspot. They're showing 1.2 dBi and zero meters for the antenna height, but that's a default value. So, so it's hard to tell whether or not they're using a, a higher antenna here or a higher dBi antenna because you know they, they don't have to declare that at this time. This particular hotspot is witnessing uh, 28 other hotspots and it's making about $248 per month right now. And you can compare that if you're looking to put a, a hotspot in this general area, you can look at another hotspot that's close by, Soft Ruby Rook. And this hotspot's using a Bobcat miner with uh, 4 dBi, uh, which is accurate for Bobcat. And they're showing a 4 meter high antenna. So because they entered this, it's, that's probably uh, representative of, what, of their configuration. They're witnessing 19 other hotspots, and they're making about $177 per month. That's not quite as good as Jumpy Raspberry Rooster, but we don't know the full story about them. You can also use the RF line of sight tool at scatacore.com to see how high your antenna needs to be. So if you want to put a hotspot about five miles southeast of Carthage, Missouri, for example, you can enter the geographical uh, coordinates for your location and a location in Carthage, Missouri into this tool, and it will generate an RF line of sight topographical profile. You can see here that uh, it looks like there's some obstruction between your proposed hotspot and the hotspot in Carthage. So with this tool, you can increase the antenna height. If you increase the, uh, the blue antenna here, which is your proposed uh, hotspot site, to nine meters, then the RF line of sight line turns green, which means that uh, you have a clear vision of, of this hotspot location in Carthage. If Carthage, however, is a hilly town, then there may be locations in Carthage where you can't reach. So if you're really interested in, in, in that, you would need to run several cases using different locations in Carthage to see what kind of RF line of sight you have. And that way you can plan your antenna height uh, to get the best coverage. The fifth step is to order your antennas, cabling, and installation hardware. 
and six, you wait for your minor delivery, or you pay the market price on eBay for a quicker delivery. Seventh, you need to finalize your hotspot locations for your maximum profit. And the goal is to find locations that can talk to lots of other hotspots, but always be at least 300 meters away from any other hotspot. You can use explorer.helium or heliumtrack.app to find existing hotspots and see how well they're doing. You may also be able to see if they're using external antennas and how high they are. There are also paid tools such as hotspotrf.com that will help you find the best new hotspot locations. The eighth step is to negotiate with hotspot location owners to place your hotspot in their home or on their property. You can offer to pay their monthly internet bill. You could offer them $100 a month or $200 a month or offer them a percentage of earnings, whatever is agreeable between you and the owners of your proposed hotspot location. The final step is to onboard your hotspots. So after you receive your Helium Miner, you download the Helium app to your smartphone. Your Helium app is also your Helium wallet. It lets you send and receive HNT tokens. Then you connect your hotspot device to the internet with Ethernet cable or Wi-Fi. If you can do it with Ethernet cable, that's a little more reliable than Wi-Fi, which can go in and out. Then you connect your hotspot device to power. It's only going to draw about 5 watts. Then you connect to any external antennas. And then you register your hotspots with the Helium app. You can use the Helium app discovery mode to finalize the best places within each property for your hotspots. Then you set your hotspot locations in the Helium app. Wait for your hotspots to sync with the Helium network. It may take a day or two and then you'll start earning Helium tokens. What about off-grid installations? Your hotspot needs a miner, an antenna, a power source, and an internet connection. That's usually not a problem for home or workplace installations. But with a little work and extra cost, you can put a hotspot anywhere. Why would you want an off-grid hotspot? It has superstar potential it can make you a lot more money. A hotspot on a hill or mountain overlooking a city can give you unobstructed views of dozens or even hundreds of other hotspots. It can also be an easier sell when you're looking for people to host your hotspots. You can install your hotspots out of the way on their properties, and they don't have to provide electricity, internet, or space in their homes or on their roofs. Here's what you need for an off-grid hotspot. A sealable enclosure, a small solar panel, battery, and charge controller combination, a cellular modem, an antenna, a mounting pole, guide wires, lightning arrestor, and ground wire. To make it happen, you can build and install it yourself, contract it out, hire someone like Nick Hawks to help you. Buy pre-made from a company like Bevotech. Nick Hawks recommends allowing $2,000 to $3,000 for everything if you do it yourself. And you're going to need landowner permission for your off-grid hotspot. So you can ask them nice if you can put your hotspot on their land. Or negotiate a fixed lease or offer a percentage of earnings. In the next video, we'll look at exchanging your Helium tokens for U.S. dollars or other currencies. If you want to learn more about do-it-yourself hotspots, you can start by Googling Nick Hawks. Or are you thinking about getting an iHub hotspot miner? Then keep watching my videos to help you understand the risks and rewards. If you can't wait, you can get started right away by clicking the first link in the comments below. Click the nationalconsumeradvocate.com forward slash helium dash minor link in the first comment below this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel to get the latest info about making money with your hotspot.